Ein Freund von mir arbeitet in der Personalabteilung eines großen Unternehmens und der hat mir mal verraten, was heutzutage bei diesen Einstellungstests so alles für Antworten gegeben werden. Auf die einfachsten Fragen. Hm. Lösen Sie diese Aufgabe mit Dreisatz. Antwort eines Abiturienten, ich gucke kein Dreisatz. Oder was ist Inflation? Die Antwort französisches Nudelgericht ist manchmal noch am nächsten dran. Was ist Inflation? Wir alle kennen das Wort, die Gazetten sind voll davon, aber was ist das? Was bedeutet Inflation? Wissen Sie es? Hm? Seit genau zehn Jahren hüte ich auf meiner heimischen Festplatte ein Videofundstück aus den Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika, das ich Ihnen heute zeigen möchte, eben weil die Thematik leider gerade jetzt so gut passt. Es geht um ein sehr altes Tagebuch aus Deutschland. Do you know what inflation means? This is the story of hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany, from the point of Elsa Matson. She warns us of all of this because she lived through it. Do you know what inflation means? I'm not an expert on this subject. I simply went through the German inflation myself. And the following is a picture of this dreadful experience as I remember it. May my story begin with the year 1918, which marks the end of World War, lost for the Germans. Four years of the most cruel suffering and losses had turned into the unbelievable fact of defeat. Where were we going now? At that time, I was a young girl attending high school in Wiesbaden. Through the war, Germany was blockaded and therefore could hold out only a certain time, using up its large reserves. But by the time the reserves were used up, everybody was sure that the war would long be over. A few skepticals, however, thought it safer to fill up shelves and drawers. Influenced by speculative advertising, soon everybody wanted to be safe for months ahead and the people began rushing to the stores. This buying boom, of course, raised the prices and the scarcer the goods became, the more feverish people bought and the higher the prices roared up. People rushed to the banks, taking out all the money available, and those who could afford it bought in carload dimensions. The state was forced to take quick action by closing the banks and stores and confiscating all goods. Thousands of agencies sprang up overnight to, to measure up what there was and to bite it into so much ahead. The state gave out cards monthly or weekly, the amounts of one's share varying with the state's researches. Lots of trouble ensued with the farmers who were to sell their products only to the government. They also were not to feed their animals with food suitable for men. Thus the months went by and one's food rations became lower and lower. Gradually there was a better supply, but now the trouble was that the prices remained at a level way beyond the reach of the average person. Yet here the prices kept on going up, the wages always limping far behind, and people stood gazing before the store windows, seeing things they bitterly needed, yet never could afford to buy. Suddenly, a new word sprang up. Everybody talked about it to find out what it meant. It was the word inflation. We were right in it. When did it begin? When and how would it end? Was inflation the expression for continued racketeering? Prices jumped up faster and higher than ever before from week to week, from day to day, and finally from hour to hour. Saving meant certain loss and losing out. Therefore, the only certain things to do was to spend. Spend to the bottom all one yet was able to earn. People bought what they could get 
hold of, things they needed and things they did not know what to do with, just to spend and spend quickly the little they had. Because maybe tomorrow they could buy only a fraction for what they could pay for right now. Credits, of course, were also long a thing of the past. With salary in the pocket, the next thing to do was to rush to the stores and dispose of every penny. But the tragedy with wage earners was that their salaries were fixed at the beginning of the month or week and paid out at the end of the month or week, never taken into consideration a devaluation of money in between. The money earned bought less and less each week. Can you visualize what this meant to those who had lived from their bank accounts? When I started working, I earned a few hundred marks a month, then thousands of marks a week, hundreds of thousands. After that, I rose into the rank of the multimillionaire, receiving tens of millions, hundreds of millions, dividing them finally into a loaf of bread, maybe some cheap bologna or Limburger cheese. Finally, I received billions. But at the end of the last week, when I received hundreds of billions, I could buy just about one roll and had left not even enough to buy the cheapest post stamp. This was the climax of the inflation. This is a diary of warning to all the people of the world. She says, can you imagine? No. Most people can't. People were actually receiving their pay like this. They would bring wheelbarrows. At, at one point, people were, um, uh, were getting paid hourly, and then they would have to go out and spend the money. If you ordered a cup of coffee, you would pay for it at that time. You wouldn't sit and drink coffee because the price of that coffee would be more when you walked out than when you ordered the coffee. It was actually cheaper to take, take your money, and some people do it by the shovel full, and burn that. Burn it. People would put it in big barrels and set it on fire. It was a lot easier to warm yourself by the fire of burning money than it was to actually spend it. You couldn't spend it. It was worthless. It was worth less than the paper it was printed on. The kids couldn't afford toys. And so really the kids would play with cash. But it wasn't so bad. If you look here, they could actually make some really impressive model skyscrapers with just a portion of that week's wages. You've heard of the phrase, the bubble's about to burst. Well, let me demonstrate. This is what is happening to us right now, and nobody's really paying much attention. The bubble is about to burst. And what it means is we print money. And this is normally how we print money. Ben Bernanke is printing money. When he got in, we just print a little bit. But when that wasn't enough, he decided to print more money. And when this isn't enough, when you can't print that much, and that won't pay for your debt, then you have to print more money. More money, more money, more money, until you're just covered in money. Our printing presses are becoming bubble machines, and the bubbles will eventually come down and burst. <laughs> 